All right, in this video cheat sheet, we're going to enable OSPF routing on one of our routers in the network. We're going to start off with the baseline show command of show IPv6 OSPF to see if OSPF has already been enabled on the router. Then we're going to enable the debug command, debug IPv6 OSPF events, so that we can see how things unfold on the router as we enable the OSPF routing process. And then we're going to finish up with the verification show commands of show IPv6 OSPF and show run pipe begin router OSPF so that we can then see what the running config looks like. So let's look at the network topology. We're going to be enabling OSPF v3 here on router 2. It has already been enabled on other on all the other routers throughout the network but we're just going to enable it here on router 2. So we're going to start with our show IPv6 OSPF command that I talked about in the introduction and of course we don't have anything because we have not enabled OSPF v3 on this router. So let's put in our debug IPv6 OSPF events command so that we can see how things unfold and get router 2's perspective on what's going on as we enable OSPF on router 2. Okay, so the way that you enable OSPF on a router is you put in this command right here in uh, comp t in comp t mode or config mode ipv6 router ospf and then the process id just like for ipv4 um, also just like with ipv4 this process id is locally significant all of the other routers have a process id that is associated with the router number. So the OSPF v3 process ID for router 1 is 1. For router 4, it's 4. For router 2, it's going to be 2. Once again, just like with IPv4 or OSPF version 2, which is the OSPF version we use today for IPv4 prefixes, it's locally significant. It does not matter. They all don't have to match if you don't want to. And once again, my network, none of them match. They all reflect the router number that's associated with that OSPF process. So I'm going to put in process 2, IPv6 router OSPF 2. Now I'm going to do my verification command of show IPv6 OSPF. And as you can tell, we have not gotten anything out of our debug. So just because we've enabled it on the router doesn't necessarily there's there's any OSPF v3 events going on. And it grabbed the wrong command. Go back and grab this. All right, so show IP v6 OSPF. So even though the debug didn't put out any information, we do now have some information here where before we didn't get any with this command. We now have a router ID of 22.22.22.22 and you say well wait a minute this is IPv6 yes but even with OSPF v3 which routes IPv6 prefixes it uses an IPv4 address or a 32-bit address for its router ID I know it's strange I don't understand it and uh, we have some other shortest path first schedule delay we got some other timers and, and some things going on so we can see that the command took and we have some changes so let's look at the running command so I executed the show run pipe begin router OSPF I executed this command right here and we come down and we look at and and here is the OSPF v3 process ID and by default just like with OSPF version 2 it puts the log adjacency changes underneath the process so that is how you enable OSPF v3 routing on a Cisco router with the IPv6 router OSPF and then the process the locally significant process ID we started off with our baseline commands. We did a debug command that didn't yield any results. We enabled OSPF routing process and we verified that the commands took.